Hey everybody, Mike here with everything about concrete. So in this video, I'm going to show you how we pour a 28 foot by 28 foot concrete slab for a garage. Now this slab is all sloped to that little center drain in the middle. You can see that little drain that was installed by the plumber. And we're going to slope everything to that so it's going to have an inch and a half pitch from the outside of the forms to the drain. This slab was a little bit unique also in that it had 18 inch deep edges. So that's just what the building codes are in this town we're working in today. They, the slab really probably doesn't need edges that thick, but that's what the building codes are, so that's what we had to build it to. Now the first thing we're doing is we're going to go around and we're going to just pour up about 12 inches deep in the edges just to make sure all the forms hold. I mean, 18 inches deep, and you can see how it tapers up into the slab. The slab itself on that on the flat part is six inches, so there's a lot of pressure against the forms. And you can see we got metal pins about every four feet, and we have those those kickers. We call them kickers or braces, about every four feet. So we got it we got it formed up really really well, but there's still a lot of pressure on this. So we'll go around the whole outside perimeter and pour it up, you know, about 12 inches, just to make sure the boards hold. You can see the guy in the back, way in the back. The guy in the white shirt there, he's making sure everything stays straight. If he needs to if he needs to push the board in a little bit or tap it out a little bit, that's what he's gonna do. You got a string run on top of the form to make sure everything stays straight. And you can see he's also got a vibrator there. He's got my DeWalt pencil vibrator that he's using to vibrate the edges to make sure that all stays nice and smooth. But if this is your first time watching me guys, my name is Mike Day, I own Day's Concrete Floors. We pour concrete just about every day. So if you like that kind of stuff, if you like, I, I teach all about concrete flat work, stamp concrete, epoxy floors, things like that. You know, go ahead and down there and hit subscribe. I come out with a couple videos a week, so hit the bell notification and you'll be notified whenever I get a new video. So what we're doing now that we get all the what we call the haunched edges, you know, we call this this a haunched slab. Some people call it an Alaskan slab or a monolithic, monolithic slab. They're basically all the same. Just depends on what part of the country you're from. Let me know down in the comments what you guys call this type of slab, and also where you're from down there too. So everybody will know what the the lingo everybody uses in different parts of the country, or or maybe even in. A, if you live in a different country than the US. So we're on to the second truck. This is going to take about 24 yards total. We're pouring a 3500 PSI mix. Got fiber mesh in it. It's also got, you can see we got a guy pulling up the wire and we got a double row of rebar around the outside edge. But the key, you know, the hard, probably the hardest part with these slabs like this with the edges so thick is just keeping those forms straight. So there's a lot of work that goes into forming these up. And then, you know, you gotta be have a have a person right on it, right on the forms when you're pouring. So it just takes basically one person just to keep the form straight. And then, you know, there's four of us here, the crew of four of us getting the, the concrete poured out. You see Darren and Luke on the straight edge now, they're kick screening. And we just shot a wet pad in the middle of this with our laser. You can see the laser way back there on the right. We're using that to set our pads, our grades in the middle. And then we're either using the top of the form or a chalk line. Some, some places we got a snap chalk line inside the form that we're going by for the outside grade. And we'll get the thing screeded that by hand and then we'll get it both loaded and then we'll move on to this next truck. We gotta get this truck empty. There was only room for one truck at a time in the driveway. So we got the first truck dumped out in the thicker edges and then the second truck we're finishing up right now. And then we got a third truck coming. So I'm scraping down the chute as you can see. Darren and Luke and Tia, they're gonna finish up screeding that, that bay back there. Then we can get the third truck in here and get this finished up. So let me know, you know, why why are you guys watching a video like this? Are you watching it because you want to learn how to do it? You want to try this on your own? Are you watching it just to see how it's done for like kind of like entertainment? Um, or are you in the concrete business and just 
you know stuff like this just interests you let me know that down in the comments and if you like these kind of videos you know go ahead please smash the like button uh, YouTube ranks these videos based on your your input you know your uh, your communication with the video so the be the more you guys interact with the video the better it's ranked in YouTube and that really helps me out a lot too so I appreciate that so the third truck showed up so as you can see we got half of it screeded no it's gonna this truck's gonna finish up the rest because most of the concrete actually went in that edge that's thick so we don't have a lot of concrete left to pour so we'll get most of that poured out get it all leveled and then we'll get the screed on it and get it both loaded a uh, slab like this you know 24 yards in total this took us just about just about an hour to pour, you know, the way we had to pour it today. If the edges weren't so thick, we wouldn't have had to go around the whole thing first. You know, we would have been able to just start on one side and pour to the other. A lot of you guys have probably seen that in some of my other videos. But we're not, I'm, I'll be honest with you, I'm not a real big fan of edges that thick. I almost think it's more work setting a slab up like this than it is would be just pouring a little frost wall around this thing and the cost you know the cost could be debatable I guess you could you could figure out the cost based on what it's going to take an excavator to dig dig the hole for you set up the forms pour the forms and then have somebody like me come in and pour a floor or if you're going to have you know a crew come in and do all the forming like this pour it and then strip it so we found that it's pretty close to the same as pouring a four foot frost wall. The cost is anyway, as doing something like this. There's just, there's a lot of labor involved. If you wanna learn about costs, and if you wanna learn about, you know, how to do stuff like this, my, my concrete underground site, my private site, where I have all these trainings in there to teach you how to do this stuff, I'll have a link for that down in the description. So if you wanna check that out, you can. And let me know what you guys want to learn about the most also. Like, what is what is the number one thing you guys want to learn about? And let's let, let me figure that out for me. Let me know down in the comments, and I'll see if I can come up with some type of video about that to help you guys out with that. You can see Jim there on the left. He's, he's vibrating those edges, so when he strips the forms, everything looks nice and smooth. That DeWalt pencil vibrator right there, you know, that's got a five amp battery on it. That thing will last for quite a long time. So if, for any of you guys thinking about what kind of what kind of vibrator you need just to do flat work like this, you know, we use that for, you know, slabs like this. We use it for stairs, for anything, anything that's gonna be exposed, any type of edge, we'll use that vibrator for. And it's plenty good enough for that. So we're working our way back getting on this last bay all done and we got to remember those edges are 18 inches thick so it's it's kind of hard our boots are only about 16 inches tall so we got to be careful where we step or we're going to get concrete down in our boot so luke's getting that edge magged up nice and smooth so he knows you know where he needs to score with the straight edge that's a 14 foot straight straight edge we're using it's a magnesium straight edge when we screed by hand, these are the types of screeds we use. We use these magnesium ones. They're almost like a 2x4, but they're really, really light. They stay nice and straight. We've got all different sizes. We've also got vibratory screeds. We've got a, the Screed Demon from MBW that we use a lot when we do concrete floors. And I've got a Shockwave from Marshalltown that we use. So both are really, really good screeds. If you're looking for a, a vibratory type of screen. So what I'm doing now is I just saw something that looked a little funny to me. So I wanted to step back up in there a little bit and just check it to make sure I had it screeded perfect. This slab is flat, so there's really no room for error. You don't want any dips. You don't want any humps in it. You want it just as flat as possible. So I went back up in there and just checked it. It ended up being just fine, but it only takes a second to go back over something. And you, with concrete, you know, you only get the chance to do things right once the first time. 
once it gets hardened, then it's then it's on to some type of repair if it's not right. So we're just shoveling out that little bit of extra concrete we got, and we're going to finish that bay up. Now T is T is going to run the bull float over it and finish bull floating that last half. And we like to bull float things really smooth, and then that's it until we power trial it. We're going to end up power trialing this slab, and then we'll saw some expansion joints in it with a with a soft cut saw. And that's how we'll finish this off. So again, you know, down in the description below, guys, if you guys want to learn how to do this stuff, I got the Concrete Underground, my private training site. You guys can join that. It's a monthly subscription site, so you can stay for a month, you can stay for a year. Um, however long you think you need to learn what you need to learn, I, I help you out any way I can in there. You know, if you want to start your own business, you know, I'll help you with that. Any information that I can give you to help is what that site is for. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. This is 28 by 28 concrete slab. Took 24 yards. And we'll see you on the next video.